Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here, and yes, we are talking about the chance for snow, but no, this is not going to be a big event, not a ton of accumulation, and a lot of you are not going to see snow, but this is probably the first legitimate, I would say, widespread chance of the season. So let's get right to it. We're going to get right to the details. First things first, what has been changing over the last couple of weeks is cold air has been building over Canada. I'm going to show you the current surface temperatures. This is really cold air. This is a piece of Arctic air that's made it down into Canada. It's finally on the move. And so for the first time in a long time, we're seeing cold air make it down to the United States. At the same time, we also have snowpack. Now, this is the current snowpack departure from normal. What that is, is basically, is there some more snow in these areas than there typically is for this time of year? And if you look carefully, everything <laughs> shades of blue, that's above average snowfall. And this is where we want to see snowfall in the Carolinas because this allows for cold air to make it further south. You notice out west, there's some below average, and even along the Canadian border, it's not great. But for us in the Carolinas, the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, and most of the Northeast has above average snowfall right now, which what that does, it allows the cold air that comes south to be colder. It moves over refrigerated ground. It also allows for cold air to build closer to us. Instead of over Canada and the Arctic, it starts to build in the continental United States. So this allows for cold air masses to be colder than they otherwise would. Now, why is that important? Well, coming up on Friday, while it's not a big storm, it will have colder air than what we had yesterday on Tuesday morning. The reason why is the cold air is going to be moving in from the Northeast. So let me advance this. This is starting this afternoon, six o'clock, short range guidance. We're gonna go um, through tonight and into early tomorrow morning. So this gets us to Thursday morning. The thing you notice right off the bat, there is an area of high pressure over here. Remember how cold and snow covered the ground is here? So that's a pretty cold high pressure system. As we go through Thursday afternoon, that high pressure system begins to shift east with time. At the same time, you see our low pressure system developing along the Gulf Coast region, some moisture down there. It's kind of spread out, but there's certainly a low pressure system there. We'll go into uh, Thursday night. And as we get into Thursday night, I'm going to stop it right here, and you'll see a high pressure system developing over the eastern Great Lakes, Ohio, Pennsylvania. That's over above average snowfall and really cold air. So what that does, that high pressure wedges itself down the eastern facing slopes and provides low level cold air. That's cold air down at the ground, not so much above our heads, but it is a deeper area of cold air than we've had recently. So as we go into Thursday night, moisture moves into this air mass. You can see the wedge clear. I mean. This is a perfect wedge setup. The high pressure is basically over Baltimore and New York, and it's pumping in cool, dry air. But up above our heads, 5,000 feet plus, we've got warm, humid air coming in from the south that's trying to override it. So the colder that and drier, honestly, that surface layer is, the better the chance that some of this starts to mix in with snow. Now, I know the, the map is showing green, but this first batch is going to be virga or snow or what we call snurga evaporating before it reaches the ground. But it's going to moisten up the atmosphere as well as cool the atmosphere down. As we go into the early morning hours, this is Friday morning, by the way, 12.45 in the morning, so after midnight, we get into about three o'clock in the morning. You can see um, a pretty good batch of snow developing along Interstate 40. Now, could we see snow mixing around Charlotte? Absolutely, that is a possibility, but you're starting to see this area in particular is probably more favored because the air is colder and temperatures are gonna be more favorable. Even in Charlotte, if we see snow, it's not gonna stick because air temperatures probably stay above freezing. It's really about how cold it is above our head. You can see as I zoom in, I'll tilt this. This is four o'clock uh, Friday morning. We'll go through time and you can see kind of the rain snow line, Interstate 40 to 85, that typical area. So the area with greatest chance of snow in this setup is going to be these areas right in here, okay? If you're in Charlotte South, Sorry, I don't think this is really going to be a, an event. Could we see flakes? Yes, but there'll be novelty. Probably not going to accumulate. And even up here, you're not looking at huge accumulations because even here, it looks like it changes over to rain and mixes enough as we get past sunrise on Friday that it becomes a non-issue. So let's talk about the area I'm talking about closer and possible impacts. So if you guys have followed me long enough, you know I love this product. It's the winter storm impact graphic. It shows basically minor limited impacts in gray and then goes up in scale minor moderate major i'm um, just think of this low medium high and extreme and the gray is just areas where there could be wintry weather and if you look closely you can see some of the mountains uh, eastern facing slopes because there could be a combination of ice and snow there but most of the areas in gray you're talking about 
maybe just a slick bridge here or there. You see a couple of yellow spots here and there going up towards the triad. That's mainly because it might affect the interstates there. And then we go off to the east, you can see maybe a few spots over towards Durham. But this gives you a really good feel for where we could see the wintry weather. A graphic I shared earlier today, which I love as well, is the probability of seeing one inch of snow, um, not one inch, excuse me, a trace of snow or measurable. So you see this, I will show you the one inch by the way in a minute, but let me widen this out. So this is the probability of seeing measurable snow. For those that don't know, we only measure snow to the nearest 10th of an inch. Very small total, we don't go below that. If it is, it's a trace. So just to give you a close in view of this, probability of seeing measurable snow around Rock Hill, um, Fort Mill, Tinka K, Monroe, Waxhaw, Weddington, Charlotte, between 10 and 20%, not really huge. You get up towards the lake, it jumps to about 30%, but Interstate 40 is where you jump above the 50% range. And as you go further north, you see the range goes up to 70, 80%. Now, that's just measurable. That's probably not gonna, no one's gonna notice that. It's not gonna be a big impact. One inch of snow, kind of the threshold I use around here uh, for possibly getting some significant impact. So let's take a look at that. We'll refresh this and we'll show you the chance of seeing one inch of snow. Um, so let me pop this back up. That was actually a little bit different. Tool. So you look at the possibility of one inch of snow, it starts getting whittled back quite a bit. And you're really looking at the mountains and the Yatkin Valley area north of Interstate 40. So right in here, this is where we highlight the possibility of seeing at least an inch of snow. And up there, the chances, again, you know, vary uh, a little bit across the area. If I go to Statesville, you can see the probability of one inch is only 17%. That's not super high, right? And for Charlotte, by the way, just to look at this, chance of measurable snow is 28, the chance of one inch is zero. So it's per that's why I say Charlotte, probably not. But you get up towards Lenore, you know, the chance of one inch of snow jumps to 23%, and even two inches is at least 11%. So that's kind of what we're expecting in this area. So let's look at the blend of models for this. And this is what the blend of models, not just one model, all the models blended together shows for accumulation. Um, I will put out my map later today or tonight, but you can see Interstate 40 trace amounts to maybe a dusting. Um, that's all less than a half an inch. If you want to see an inch, you probably got to get to this gray area, which is up in here. That gives you a pretty good perspective on where we're likely going to see accumulating snow, if at all. Now, this is a huge event. Absolutely not. Probably, you know, not going to have major impacts on the road because a lot of this happens during the day Friday. Even though it might be snowing, the temperature's above freezing, it's daylight, melting on contact, white rain. But, of course, we'll talk more about this. I will post more updates, and I will have my first snowfall map sometime this evening, maybe as soon as 6 o'clock, and maybe definitely for 6.30 on my streaming show on WCNC+. So that's the latest. Stay tuned. Friday could be our first little taste of winter weather without a freak out. No need to buy anything. No need to change plans. Just a typical December winter event in the Carolinas. Remember, it's supposed to snow here.